that's great. Father Nevin, thank you for the opportunity to learn. Thank you for some lessons. Please uh, give us wisdom and understanding and be us Lord. Because there are so many things to learn. Help us to understand and prioritize. Teach us which one is important and not. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We just send your prayer. <clears throat> there are so many things that are going on and things to learn. So we need to pray what to which one to uh, no, to do. Because God knows the future. <laughs> one the one thing I want to teach you today is about APIs. If you go to Facebook, to YouTube, to uh, OpenAI, as a programmer, you can access the data in the internet if you know how to use API. Have you used API before? Web API? Okay, now we will learn how to use Web API. But if we ask ChatGPT, what uh, what is the modern way to make a web API? <clears throat> API stands for Application Programming Interface. Uh, you are programmer. You are Java programmers. I think in Java you did you put import in Java. Import something. You need to put library. Import import. <clears throat> In C, you include. In PHP, include also. But here, we are programming in the web because advanced web, and we can we want to be able, we want to learn how do you get data from YouTube, from Facebook, from Google, <coughs> and from other web services. For example, in Moodle, I learned to use API by reading Moodle API. For example, here in Moodle, you know Moodle, the I study. I, I, I research about how to connect Moodle to IOLIS personal. And then <clears throat> I read here that there is an, I uh, know, there is a SSO, single sign on capability of Moodle. So there are, for example, here. So you can do so many things on Moodle without using the user interface. Just, just, I uh, know, calling APIs. So I just want to summarize. You have to enable a uh, web API. <clears throat> and then Moodle will give you a key. The key is supposed to be secret because anybody can call the web API, but you have a key secret, so secret key, so that you're the only one who can get. And they know who is calling because of the secret key. So I use the web API, see? These are all the functions. Now what are the functions that you can do with Moodle? You can search people, get email, send email, backup, submit, every, almost everything you can do with iStudy or Moodle, you can do through the web API. So what I did class, <clears throat> I, want to think, I want to automatically add students, I do, want to automatically create classes <clears throat> because there are like <clears throat> Thousands of classes, not thousands, hundreds of classes. Imagine if all the teachers will create like in MS Teams and will add all the students. So it's a lot of work. So I made, I tried to make an automation. And then I read the API and I found in the API how to create a class <clears throat> and the class name. So if you go to iStudy, all the class name are your uniform. Right? That is the course code and there's a number class id and there's a schedule so they all look the same because they're all uh i created all of them 
using a, uh, API call. And then automatically also adding students. I look at IOLIS roster and then I add all the students one by one. If the students have no account, I create account also in Moodle. And then <coughs> there is here the, oh, there is no single sign on. For example, there is create user. Yeah, this one. Core user, create user. This is how, and also deleting user. For students who have dropped the subject, I delete them. <laughs> So the, there are two formats. Uh, there are many formats for API, but most the most popular format, according to ChatGPT, is REST. And REST REST stands for Representative State Transfer. The other way is what is it? I'm looking for JSON, this one, JSON. <clears throat> Most of the APIs uh, can interact in JSON or XML. But if you look at JSON format, how does JSON data look like? This is an example of how JSON data looks like. For example, you have a record name, John Doe, this is the field and the data. Looks like almost like CSS, right? So it's not, not so difficult. That's what JSON data looks like. How about XML? How does XML data look like? <coughs> and XML looks like HTML. But I, what my favorite is, how does ESV look like? <laughs> tab, this is tab delimited uh, like this. <laughs> if, you, if you ever hear this ESV or CSV, how about CSV? How does CSV data look like? Course, it's just comma 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 <clears throat> this one I know how to make all of the APIs I used to make were either CSV or TSV but I tried to be more modern the other week I made a, I made a I know, JSON API <laughs> because Gento class if you are many programmers already in the team like you are and then you give all of them database access. What if somebody ma makes a mistake, right? But if you just, for example, do programmers in Facebook have direct DB access or through API? So, <clears throat> According to ChatGPT, it is generally considered best practice for programmers to access database through API. Oh, diba? <coughs> API, API. So we are going to learn API today. We know how to access the database directly, just PG Connect, right? But today we are going to learn API because we will become, I don't know, best practice programmers. Why do we need, why is better to, to, do, to use, to access and give access to date to API, through API, instead of directly connecting to database? Number one, security. Number two, abstraction, scalability, flexibility, monitoring, and logging. Uh, there is one thing here that they do not put cache. You can cache results and you can monitor and log, and you can throt throttle. For example, in Facebook, uh, in Google sending email API, you cannot send more than like 2,000 every day. 
2,000 recipients. So you cannot abuse the API also because they count how many people you send already. That uh, prevents uh, <coughs> abuse, security, and monitoring and logging. And you can bill them. <laughs> For example, if OpenAI allows you to ask 30 questions per hour, <coughs> then they have a counter, yeah? If you, even if you make your own program, and then you call OpenAI a question. Okay. Now let's look how to make API. So what we, we are going to make a JSON API today. There's another concept. There is a key. I told you about the key. So if you make an API and then everybody can access, then there is no security. So you use key. And the key, you give the key secretly to programmers and the, progr the programmers who you allow access to, they have access because of the key. <clears throat> and somewhere in your code, you have a key or a database of keys. So we will make a simple API today. And we will make a Bible API. But first we will I, I already have something here. So JSON info. <coughs> Okay, so let's start our virtual machine. So while the virtual machine is starting, I want to summarize. We want to make a API that accesses the database, and we want to make a separate JavaScript that accesses the API. <clears throat> so when when our Bible search comes out, it will just be a blank form. And then when we type something, it will query the API, the API for the results. And we will display the results. Diba? That's what we want to do today. <clears throat> okay. Which one we which virtual machine are we going to use? Bible search, Bible server. Maybe the newest one. This one, Bible server two. <clears throat> With APIs, the whole internet becomes the computer. Oh, di ba? Because you can call one function from that computer, another function from that computer, another function from that computer. <clears throat> the whole web becomes your computer. You can call Twitter, you can call Facebook, you can transfer data. <clears throat> if you want to ask uh, LLM, you can also ask Open, L, open AI.
I'm going to copy index uh, the Bible API dot PHP. And then <coughs> uh, how do you remove uh, delete a line K K K K K control K See, this is Bible API that H control O save. So we already have a uh, this already works, but we are not going to output uh, tables and table and key art. <clears throat> we are going to output JSON. And we are going to copy something here. The most important thing is the... Okay. How to there's a function in PHP class called JSON encode. <clears throat> it automates the sending of the JSON format. And this is called JSON encode. You can just say JSON encode and the array. So since it takes an array and converts it to JSON, there is another function, pg fetch array, fetch all maybe, fetch all. pg fetch all returns the array of all columns and all rows all rows <laughs> so we're going to edit our our code instead of outputting the whole outputting here from here until here we'll comment this out and then we will just echo json encode uh, pg fetch all rest like that and then let's see what happens <clears throat> Furthermore, we will want to tell the that our format is what is it? It's JSON. Okay. By ball API PHP query Abraham. Okay. <laughs> It looks like a uh, JSON now. So this is the output of JSON format. <clears throat> I think there is a, a way to make it look more JSON. Let's look here. Is there... One, this one. We are going to output no, 
and PHP. Uh, this one header content okay no problem my friends we just put header content type what was that application json <clears throat> let's see let's see yan <laughs> Now the browser understands our, see, this is the API output, my friends. Very nice. If we search for Abraham, if we search for Moses, then that is the API output. Very simple, yeah? Very simple. Okay. So how does it are? How does our API look like? Just like this. <laughs> Just a query and a JSON encode PG fetch or. <clears throat> so now you can, we can make the API available to, to, I don't know. I just added this one and then I removed the others. <clears throat> so we now have an API function that queries the Bible. Now, let's make a JavaScript call to call the API. I think I have never done this before, so uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Anong papangalan natin dito class? We'll call it uh, Bible API Caller. Okay. We'll call it Bible CP index that HP Bible API call color that HP. <clears throat> and then we will have a form and then we will remove all of these things. Where is the cut? Con cut. Okay, we remove all of these things. Okay, so we will have two PHPs, my friends. This one and Bible API dash caller. But nothing will happen here because it submits to itself and it doesn't do anything. Now we are going to ask ChatGPT. How to call a PHP backend API which outputs JSON data from uh, JavaScript front end. <coughs> it will probably, oh, it just yes, use fetch. I like this one. <coughs> <laughs> So it looks like we already have our, it just says fetch, then response. Okay. We want to display. We want to send a query via get <coughs> and receive JSON data, then display it in a table, in an HTML table. Display the results. <coughs> Pro
programming by touch chatting. <laughs> I read the other week. You get, you are not fired because you don't know. You are fired because you don't know what what to type in chat GPT. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you will know what to type if you read and you watch many videos about what to type. So, my friends, let's see. Let's look at the overview. We, he, we have an HTML, a body, and then we have an API call to the query. If it responds, network response was not okay. If there is data, we PR, oh, for each row. So the data, we have a function, a code block for the data. And for all of the data, we make a table. Create a table, and then we assemble the table like this, and then append, append. Canon lang. <clears throat> so let, let me copy this little by little. Display. Then we have our skip. What's going on? Size to where is my screen? Fetch. We are going to fetch HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash Bible API dot PHP. <coughs> okay, let's just ask ChatGPT.
I wish I could copy and paste this. <laughs> How can we copy and paste here? I wish that you can copy and paste. I don't like to type. Okay. How to paste? Control Shift P. Really? into the terminal you can type control shift P control V doesn't work using the menu devices shared clipboard by direction just to host cannot figure out how to copy and paste.
Do you know how to copy and paste in virtual box? I don't know how to copy and paste. I can't. Okay, we will type. We will type na lang. I will type na lang. So I cannot figure out how to copy and paste. We are going to type my friends. What happened to this? I think I press control S. Reset pause. So we have a function. have another function if that response that would be throw new We 
Bulti Bardi Now we are programming the browser. So we do all our interface things in the browser. What I like to try is without using any framework, just plain JavaScript. Graphics that name no, no, no. we will it is the reference and what is our output? We have an output here. <coughs> we'll put a book. Then chapter and then colon and then row that verse verse n and then in the next TD we are going to put the verse the next TD we are going to put the row that verse TD probably like this let's see the chat GPT okay correct and then we will do some JavaScript TD TR table by Then charge the row and close the function and close the other function. Function lock. If there is an error, we'll just display the error in the console. a problem with the fetch then error then close function close function call Close function. I think this is already for the. This is for the fetch. Catch. This is for the data error. And the catch data. Then, then, then. And this fetch. So this is for the function. Function fetch. So 
So this close is for the function, not for the fetch. Where is the close for the fetch? This is close for the fetch. This is close for the function. Yeah, yeah. Let's close for the function. Now let's connect an event to the search button. This one by copying and pasting this one. And our get element by ID will call it, I just call it S. Get element by ID S, add event listener. On submit to function. Function event in JavaScript, you, you make a function on the fly. <clears throat> event that prevent default according to the comment, this will prevent the default form submission, and then we have a constant. Search query document that get element by ID S and S that value. Just copy the value and then we call fetch data, which is our function. This is a function up here called fetch with fetch data search query. And then we close the function and we close the function call argument and we close the script. This is the end of the world. The rest we just oh where are we going to put the data? Where does the table come out of? There is a table here. Name data table. Okay, no problem, my friends. We will make a table. ID data table. This is where we get, we will put all the things. And then we will name a T head PR TD uh, reference and CPTH table header, table header. We have 15 more minutes. Table header, table header, uh, verse. Table header slash tr. And then we have a t body which doesn't contain anything. Okay, let's just put some separation. Save, save. For the first time, I'm making a JavaScript client. <clears throat> now let's see if there is any sense of what we made. <laughs> By going here, reloading this one. Aha! We reloaded. This is how the image, the verse looks like under the hood. And when we click submit, nothing happens. Therefore, we are going to press F12 and see what's happening at the back. There is nothing happening. It's called API Moses. Oh, it works. It's 
calling but it's not displaying anything. I did not copy the the form. Then hindi naman submit type text place all the interface here. The prevent submit prevent default is not working. Name is IDS add event listener mm -hmm. prevent default. Add event listener submit. Alam ko na. <clears throat> Pagyan ko dito ng on change. On click. There is a warning. Not found. Bible API dot PHP. Local host. Bible API dot PHP. <coughs> HTTP localhost Bible API that each Search query.
Bakit send to class? Search query. S-E-A-R-C-H S-E-A-R-C-H Query Undefined Blame chat GPT why it's not working. Mm. Sorry, this is JavaScript. This is not PHP. There is something wrong with us. Uh, this is not PHP. This is JavaScript. Why am I putting dollars? one works this one doesn't work oh now there is something undefined key The problem is, the problem, my friends, is that it's submitting. <clears throat> Let's continue experimenting until there is no more time. Moses, you click Moses. I see an error at the back. Event, event, default. Get element by ID S. Uh, S is this one. Let's check again. Search form. Oh! It's supposed to be the search for this one. I see the problem. ID equals search dash form. Okay. This event is supposed to be on the search, on the form, not on the input. <laughs> Not on the text box. Okay. Maybe it will work now. Aha. When I click, it doesn't submit anymore. But it submits two times. It's because I have some. And it submits search query. Okay. Let's fix it one more time. Uh, dollar like this, like this. I think it's going to work now. Let's reload it.
but it's not working. Let's hard code something for experiment. They are calling PH Bible API PHP. The response is My friends, we are lost. <laughs> so, how do we troubleshoot this thing? That we copy and paste it. The fetch to Moses. Uh, okay, let's just try to troubleshoot. We get a warning because undefined array key. How did ChatGPT expect the search input? Input type search input. And then here, search input. That value. Okay. <coughs> search query. Get element by ID. So the query, if I hard code Moses and I click submit, it will load Moses from on click, color, and the result this is the question, the error. Query S Moses. Oh, there is data plus. There is data. Huh. There is data. <clears throat> we have data coming out of the query. There are results. <laughs> we just don't know how to properly display them. There are results, my friends. The problem is so our call to whom I coded Moses works. What I don't know how to do is maybe I did not type this properly. Maybe this is supposed to be like this. Let me try long. Because I did not obey the Now it works, my friends. Okay, but we have to fix something because there is a warning. What is this warning? Uh, probably some HTML problem. Value. Uh, 
how to focus fetch data okay we still have to fix something because there is data but it always likes to search for Moses how come Abraham yeah it, uh, bakit Moses lagi ang sinsearch na plus maybe maybe we haven't seen don't be noisy because somebody is sleeping it works somehow next meeting we are going to troubleshoot this see it, I can it search David yes it search uh, John we are over time already John okay it searches John. Question is, why is it always searching Moses? Baka naman yung Bible API. Baka dito may Moses lagi dito. We will do, we will continue our next meeting. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to learn and to uh, find out what to correct. Continue to lead us, Lord, and get us. You don't use our understanding also, my students. Just in your prayer. So what I demonstrated to you today is how to get lost. And how to find our way. Little by little. Okay. Don't get discouraged if your program doesn't run after 30 times. It's normal. <laughs> Let me stop recording.